This video is brought to you by Squarespace. A long time ago, in a country far, far away. No, this is not an X-Wing fighter from the Soviet Star Wars, but rather a story of ambition and young engineers daring to create something completely different. A tailsitter aircraft, concept patented by none other than Tesla, was experimented on by both Nazi Germany and the US, with the Convair Pogo being the most prominent one. The Soviet attempt at this idea was probably the best looking one though. A MiG-25 meets Star Wars type of aircraft powered by two engines that could take off and land to any small patch of flat surface. It might have been the perfect aircraft for the Soviet Navy and the Air Force alike. This is the story of one of the craziest Soviet designs ever imagined. The real life X-Wing, the Sukhoi Shkvab. Design and the idea of a tailsitter aircraft originates way back to 1928 when Nikola Tesla patented the concept. Yes, that Tesla. As usual, the Nazis saw the crazy idea and had to try and make it for their equally insane Führer. And the Fokker-Wolf Triebfriegel was born. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that design in the future. We move forward to 1950s and it was actually the French who wanted to try their best at the daring design with local engine manufacturer pushing the idea to prototype phase with their C450 Coloptere. Convair was next to create an actual flying prototype of a tail-sitter Delta Wing aircraft called the Pogo, which I've already covered and you can see it right here on the channel. And now we have arrived to the point in our time where our story starts. Moscow, 1960. The 60s were a crazy period for Soviet aviation industry. With Stalin's death and Khrushchev's missile obsession, almost every bureau in the USSR was working on daring new designs that would accommodate new military aviation doctrine to get those sweet government funds. And then there were the young or inexperienced engineers fresh out of college who were not able to participate in these huge projects because of the time restraints and the importance of success who ended up just sitting around. One of them was Roland Matirosov, Sohoi's bureau engineer who decided to do something about it and gathered a team of colleagues to work on a completely new design in their spare time. Their work started by using the fuselage similar to one of the Su-15 interceptors, with large canards to help with steering and maneuverability mounted on top of D-shaped intakes. However, this design didn't work out and they switched to an intake design similar to one on the MiG-25. Fuselage would have four wings positioned in an X shape with integrated fuel tanks mounted at the end of each of the wings and some sort of landing gear or shock absorbers at the bottom. Each of the wings would have had a rudder that would actually work as both a rudder and an aileron during the flight and help the pilot steer the aircraft. Additional canards were mounted in the front of the air intakes to help with the stability during the flight, something that the Convair Pogo lacked. The aircraft would have been powered by two engines, which would have provided enough power for a vertical takeoff and flight with such an unorthodox design. After creating several scale models and completing wind tunnel tests, the team of young engineers felt that they were ready to actually present this concept to the main man himself, Pavel Sohoy. You might have noticed the striking resemblance to a certain other X-Wing fighter from a science fiction movie series. This copycat mistake could have been avoided if the Russians had shared their design to the world first, perhaps with the Squarespace website. And wouldn't you know it, they also happen to be today's video sponsor. That's right, if you're a Soviet engineer, sci-fi fan, or even just someone starting a new venture, then a Squarespace website is the best you can have. Their sites are already optimized for mobile phones, have the ability to run a powerful email campaigns, and have a fantastic e-commerce tech built right into their framework. 
getting you into business right away. So don't have an egg on your face like the engineers designing an aircraft that looks just like a spaceship from a movie that would be released a few decades later. To launch your own site, go to www.squarespace.com found and get 10% off your first site and domain. Back to the show. When he was first presented with the idea, Sahoy was hesitant. He clearly understood the situation in the country and how the budget was overstretched with different bureaus developing various new planes and helicopters, and it would be very hard to have government funds diverted to such an ambitious project. But he was clearly happy with the initiative and the success of the project so far, so he decided to approve the project for further development and help the young team in their struggle. Specialists from the Illusion Bureau also reviewed and gave positive feedback for the ideas and some funds were acquired to be pumped into further development of the project. He advised them however to go under the radar and continue to work on their own as much as they could before presenting the aircraft to the Soviet Union. With newly received funds and support from Sukhoi himself, the team pushed forward. In only six months, they built a full-size mock-up, which included a rotating seat for the pilot so he could have better visibility whilst the steering controls were actually moved to the sides of the cockpit, which was very unusual and innovative for the Soviet aircraft at the time. In a final seal of approval, the team actually brought in Soviet Union test pilots to look over the cockpit and get a general feel to how everything was laid out. It seemed the team were finally ready to present it to the government. In 1963, the team presented the aircraft to the Council of Ministry of Aviation. After a very long and hard defense of the project before the council, they managed to get praise for the design and acknowledgement for their work. But after a long pause, the council ultimately rejected the idea. You see, to understand why this innovative concept was not developed, you also need to understand the current political climate of the USSR at the time. The USSR itself was still reeling from the political turmoil after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Tensions were slowly rising between the USSR and China, and politics smothered the birth of new aviation projects all around the country. Such a radical, X-wing-like fighter never even stood a chance. The team received many awards for their innovations and many of the inventions that they created during the development of the aircraft were used in future designs. But this wasn't actually the end for the team. Mati Rosov went on to become the chief designer of the Sukhoi Bureau as well as the director of the Su-34 program and he left his legacy in the skies of Russia for the years to come before passing away in 2020. One of the other team members, Vladimir Babak, became the director of the legendary Su-25 program, and Bill Nov became the vice chief constructor, and others went on to become top brass of the bureau during the Cold War. So whilst this project was a failure by itself, it helped skyrocket the careers of a young ambitious team who would all go on to become legends in their own right. Just like this very humble, Star Wars-like fighter that they created in their youth. While all of this was happening over in America, they were still working hard on the Convair Pogo, which I've got a video right here on my channel that you can watch right now. Or if you're looking for another crazy Soviet design, then I recommend the Car 22, which is part plane, part helicopter, and full awesome. So click one of those two options down below, and I'll see you in the next video right here on my channel.